Hello. Normally I cover audio and video equipment on my channel, such as this, but occasionally I do other electronic items. And today, of all things, I'm doing the repair of a soap dispenser. Now, these things are usually branded Secura, but they can have other brand names on them as well, because they are obviously sourced from a original equipment manufacturer in China. And there's a, an updated version of this soap dispenser too. They're actually really quite nice units, but I've had a few of them go faulty. So this is the way it should work. You should put your hand underneath and get soap. But uh, if you get this symptom, where you put your hand underneath and the blue light comes on, but no soap, or it might work intermittently, or it might work if you tap the bottom of the machine, uh, or perhaps if you uh, change the batteries, it might work for a little while, then it could well be that the motor has failed, the brush is inside the motor. Uh, and today we're going to uh, change the motor on one of these. I've done one before. I wasn't able to order exactly the same motor this time around. So let's see if the one I've ordered uh, fits and works. So here is our soap dispenser and it may or may not attempt to pump. I've emptied it out anyway. So at the moment it's not, but then it will. So that's a typical uh, faulty motor. And we've ordered a motor from China which is uh, the same manufacturer as the original, but a subtly different part number. Now the part numbers on these are a little unhelpful in that they tell you a lot about the amount of windings that are inside, but not so much information about the physical dimensions. And I do know that the shaft length on this is too long, so we'll have to shorten that. But first, let's just uh, make sure that it will physically fit. So we need to take the uh, bottom off this unit. Right, the bit that seems to fit is pH 2 for these, but this one is different. So they've obviously tried to make it tamper resistant. And it seems to be a T10 drive for that tamper resistant screw there. It's not really going to stop anyone, is it? Part number on this particular machine, uh, I've unfortunately stuck a sticker over part of it, but it's V470, uh, made in 2020. Okay, so there's a seal there, we need to be careful we put that back carefully. A drive belt, actually I've never had those fail, they're not the normal sort of drive belt you'd get in a cassette deck or similar, which would probably not like the uh, conditions. So now there's the motor facing us. Now we need to remove these screws to take this bottom part off. Okay, so we still haven't broken the seal on the tank itself. We just have the motor assembly here. And you notice we've got a green and a yellow wire. The red terminal on the motor is connected to yellow. So uh, we'll desolder that. So this is the motor we're going to fit here. Obviously we need to undo these screws and we'll need to remove the pulley from the top. Now the pulley is pretty much level with this plastic um, guide here which stops the belt dropping off. So when we reassemble it we want to make sure that that pulley is in that same position so that it lines up properly with the pulley on the pump. I'm going to slide the pulley off just a big screwdriver like that so there are no horrible forces on that and hopefully the pulley will fit on this shaft yes it's the same size that's good news so let's remove this uh, motor now it doesn't matter which way around we fit it I don't believe but I'm going to fit it the same way around with red to this side first I'll just make sure that fits Yes, it does. But we can't uh, go ahead and install it yet because the shaft is too long and that will collide with the bottom. Now, on a previous attempt where I did this, I kind of left it like that and drilled some of the plastic work out the bottom, but that's obviously not ideal. So we're going to go with shortening the shaft slightly. So the original shaft length from the top to the body is where I'm going to measure it. Is around 
10.5 millimeters and our new one is around 14 millimeters so we need to take a small amount of that of course you're going to have to hold the shaft when you're cutting it otherwise it'll just spin and you won't get anywhere <laughs> After lots of attempts with saws, you can see I was just getting nowhere. Uh, looked at it under the microscope and you can see a bit of a notch in the shaft, but we're never going to cut it right through like this. It must be uh, hardened steel. Now I could use bolt cutters if I had any, but all I have is the cut apart of some pliers. Uh, so let's uh, give that a go. I couldn't cut it by hand that way, but look what happens when I tried standing on the pliers. Well that was a bit risky, I could have bent the shaft, but we got away with it. Okay, so I've mounted the motor and refitted the pulley. And that's a sufficiently tight fit on the shaft that uh, it won't uh, spin on the shaft. And I didn't damage or bend it by that uh, work I had to do to uh, cut the shaft length. So now I need to uh, just solder the wires back on. Interestingly, there's no uh, interference suppression capacitor across the motor. Now I actually never did switch it off, so I should be able to test it quite simply in a moment. Good, the motor runs one way then the other. So if we put the drive belt back on. Let's test it briefly. Sounds right. I'll refit the screws to hold the base on and then I'll test it with some fluid. See that the uh, two screws for holding the base on are shorter than the screws that hold the outer cover on. Yeah, it's trying to pump, but uh, it's designed for soap and it's got air and soap in the pump, so it's not pumping very effectively at the moment. Good enough for now. Now, another problem these things can suffer from is if people, instead of putting the hand there and taking it away for the soap, put their hand up, you can finish up with soap on the uh, infrared sender and receiver here. And if that happens, you have to go through the same dismantling process and take the top off here and you can clean, undo that screw there, you can clean the sender and receiver uh, with a bit of alcohol if you manage to get soap up into that. There's an adjuster on these for variable soap dispense and if you find you have erratic soap dispense it might be that this adjuster has got soap or water in it and you may need to uh, just you could probably squirt that with uh, something like switch cleaner to uh, get it to uh, clean up and on the later model they've got sort of plus and minus buttons on the top instead of this so that's probably why because that was a uh, least reliable component okay what i was hoping to show you was that if I apply a low enough voltage, I can get the motor to stall at a certain point, and then as I increase the voltage, it stays stalled. But unfortunately, the fault has temporarily cleared itself, so I can't demonstrate that. Oh, I think I've got it. It's stalled now. The motor is not spinning. And I've increased it now to several volts, and that motor is still stalled. I'll set it so you can hear it if it was spinning. That's not spinning, okay? I've got four volts or more, five volts on there, and the motor is not spinning. But if I tap it, then it starts. So it has a bit of a dead spot in there. What I could probably do, now we have the motor out, is squirt switch cleaner in these 
holes at that end of the motor, which we couldn't get to before when it was uh, fitted. And it possibly would give the motor some more life. But uh, clearly replacing it is the uh, better option. There are some markings on the motor. I'll look at those under the microscope and we can see the exact part number of the original motor. So uh, there's the part number and date code and voltage for the original motor. Right, Max, can you test the soap machine for me? Put your hand underneath it. Excellent, that works a treat. Well, I hope you enjoyed us working through that uh, soap machine repair. But of course, normally I do audio and video technology, such as this wonderful machine. So if you are not normally a subscriber to this channel, have a look at the outro and see some of the sort of things I normally uh, work with. And uh, that might be something you'd be interested in uh, joining us with. And for my regular viewers, uh, we'll be back to working on interesting equipment like this very shortly. Bye for now.